Alright guys, so um, just wanted to show you real quick the little test bench that I have set up here. Um, I had to fill up this box with a whole bunch of um, BBs and give it a little bit of a soft cushion just to kind of take care of all the vibrations that may come off from the motors because we are going to be spinning these at their max RPMs. Um, I have two different motors here. This is the PN Racing 70 turn motor. And this is another motor that has a lot more turns than those. Uh, I'll tell you about that later on another video. But anyways, I um, wanted to show you the difference. Uh, this is the, as of right now, this is the best motor that we have as an option for the, for the SEX24 when we're doing the 130 motor swap because this is the highest turn motor that they make. Uh, in PN Racing, it's the most affordable. It's ball bearing. It's a really strong motor. Uh, you can get the, you know, it's got the neodymium magnets and it's really powerful and uh, really slow for what it is. <laughs> now we're gonna find out exactly how slow it is by actually using the test bench. Um, this is very simple. Uh, I used a dual motor ESC out of a 110 scale um, crawler. And I hooked each motor up to, you know, one of their motor leads, whatever. Uh, but if you look at the ESC on the inside, there may be two leads coming out, but they're actually coming from the same source. So they're not separate signals, per se. So it's just straight up power going to both of them. So pretty much they'll be getting the same amount of power. But because of the difference in turns, you'll see different RPMs on these motors. Um, right here I have the reflective tape on the wheel, same thing over here. Uh, these wheels are attached to the motors via this adapter plate right here. Um, that adapter plate will allow me to put any kind of other, you know, test rig in the front so that I could test, you know, a lot of other things, you know, power, lift, torque, all that kind of stuff. But uh, today I'm just going to show you the RPM because it's a simple you know, test that we can run and find out where it's at. Obviously for that we'll use something like um, this. It's just a cheap, you know, digital tachometer that you can use. Usually you use it for testing speeds of um, propellers and stuff like that. So all it is has got this little, you know, ah, wait, that's memory. Okay, test. So it's got the, dang it, put it the right way. It's got that little laser. And it tells it how fast it's going by using the reflections. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to shine it at that when it's spinning. And we'll see how many RPMs it's actually creating. So battery's already there. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So this being a higher turn motor than the, the 70 turn motor uh, should go slower. That's obvious. So see if I can do this to where you guys can see the RPMs. So we'll start by spinning it slow. Honestly, it will help if I can see where I'm shining it. All right, so right there we have about three, 4,000 RPM. So I'm gonna give it more speed. You see it maxed out at about 11,800 RPM, this motor did. Uh, they're running on 2S right now, so about 8.4 volts. Uh, now we're going to test uh, the 70 turn motor. Let's see how fast that one goes. So about 21,700 RPMs. So, as you can see, this one is way slower. Now, does that mean that this is going to be a stronger motor uh, for crawling? Not necessarily. Um, it all depends on how much amperage can be drawn by those uh, windings that are in there. If you have too many winds around the, um, the coils, they're not going to be able to transfer as much amperage, and therefore you're going to lose power and yeah, it'll go slower, but it won't be as strong as you want it to be. So that's why there's limits as to how high you could turn 
a motor and um, you know and still make power out of it so this is a very good motor a very well built motor and it's very strong as everybody already knows but um, we already saw that we can make something that's way slower than it and that's kind of something that I'm gonna show you guys later on on future videos because I have something really nice coming your way and uh, well pretty much that it's just like the basic 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 um, obviously there's other things you can do with this um, so you can see as it's spinning I can hold the motor when that happens the ESC is still sending the power but if uh, if I was to go into these and connect that to my, my um, multimeter I'll be able to tell how much amperage is going to each motor and um, when I hold this together that motor is working really hard to try to spin but it's not spinning so you'll see a peak you know a spike on that amp draw as compared to this one which is free uh, free spinning so that's another way that we could test how strong you know of a pull these motors have and that way we can know whether we're going to burn our ESCs or not and uh, had I done this before I would have saved a whole bunch of ESCs but uh, let's not dwell in the past anyways um, that's one thing we can do um, obviously when when I put some you know other attachments to this we could test how much load they can take before they actually fail to spin like that so that'll tell us which one of the motors is actually stronger because uh, for example this one is lower turn I mean higher turns and it's a slower motor which you would think it's stronger but if I can test uh, the actual amp draw if I could test how much weight they could actually take before it stops spinning we'll know whether it's actually stronger than this one for crawling or not and that's the reason why I made this ben uh, test bench because it's really hard for you to test these motors um, even this one it's already overpowered for the SCX24 so it's really hard for me to be able to just say okay I put it on the SCX24 and I just drove it and it just felt strong no that's not how you do it you need to know whether the motor is stronger than what you're replacing uh, in the vehicle so hopefully I'll be able to tell pretty accurately with this which motors will be better for the setups um, I have 50 turn motors on that one which I can test against it and uh, that one should come out on top as far as uh, strength goes uh, the other one is going to obviously going to be faster but uh, all of that I'll try to compile a whole bunch of numbers and um, kind of give you an idea of what motor will be best for you know your particular needs and hopefully what I got in store for you guys will change things around for the SCX24 I know we love our Outrunner motors and um, some other motor variations that we have like the Inrunner now the Castle 0808 that I'm using on my uh, um, Venom buggy amazing motor so there's a lot of other options when it comes to brushless but um, there is a space in, in, in the hobby for these guys um, best thing about these brush motors is that you can run them straight out of your ESC so pretty much when you do the motor upgrade all you need is the motor plate motor and pinion and boom get to work no need to swap out ESCs no we need to get another receiver if you want to run something different just straight up just put it on your SCX24 and it'll work so um, I'm going to try to find the best 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 option when it comes to that as of right now it's this guy but I got something that may knock this guy out and uh, I think you guys are going to like it uh, anyways that's it for this one um, I'll try to keep videos on this coming and uh, while I do all the other tests to give you an idea of you know how to do this yourselves and um, yeah that's where we're at <laughs> thanks for watching guys and I know I remember a lot anyway thanks